Good evening. This is Conversations. I'm Isaac Benez, your host, co-producer. I'm with Austin Sarrett and Sar Mr. Sarrett, and I'm going to call him Austin from this point on. Terrific. Happens to be a member of the Board of Trustees at the Jones Library, was appointed for one year and is now running for a three-year term. Uh, you'll have an opportunity uh, over the next several weeks to meet all of the candidates. They're, they'll be online and they'll also be live in terms of the, reproducing these tapes. So we look forward to uh, a lot of transparency in our town in terms of people getting to know the candidates. Great. Which is why ACTV exists. So let's just underline that we have an election in Amherst for Board, board of Trustees of the library as well as other positions. That's on April 3rd, Tuesday, April 3rd in 2012. Welcome, Austin. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You know, Austin has one of these last names that it, I can remember Carrot, and if I can remember to, to, to say Sarrat in the same vein of Carrot, I've been successful. We, we, started, we started this program trying to figure out how to get me to say it right. You've, do, you've done a great job so far. And anyway, well, I don't know how long that's going to last. We'll see. We'll bear with it. But seriously, You've been on the Board of Trustees for a year now during a tremendous change of administration. Why are you running again? Right. Uh, when I was first approached uh, and asked would I be interested in serving uh, on the trustees, uh, my view was that the library needs to be run well, to be run effectively. There needs to be an appropriate understanding of the role of the Board of Trustees in relationship to the director. I think I bring certain skills and experiences to the board. Uh, I thought those skills and experiences would be valuable. In my time on the board, I've come to think that those skills and experiences are valuable to the board. I love the library. I love books. I love the town. It's a form of service, and I'm happy to do it. And just to let people know, uh, Austin has worked in this town at the college, the Amherst College, for 40 years teaching sociology and law. So there's a lot of experience in our town life. I've been on the town zoning board of appeals. Uh, I've been an active participant in the Amherst Baseball Leagues, coaching Little League and Babe Ruth. I'm currently on the board of trustees of the Common School doing service, being involved in the community, that's something I, much, I very much believe in. Okay, so from the point of view of leadership, you understand fully the, the legal and fiscal responsibilities of a, of a board trustee. What are the issues ahead of us that we still have to deal with? Uh, sure, F let me just say, let me highlight uh, three things that I think are really at the center of what the work of the Board of Trustees for the library will be out into the future. First, I would say is governance. The Board itself has to develop and uh, actually implement some procedures which are not now in place. When I came on the Board, the way in which the Board uh, functioned was, I would say, somewhat informal, and that's a, a way of saying that a lot of what needed to get done hadn't been articulated in procedures or in policies. We didn't have committees in place to do the work of the board. In a sense, we are still now developing what I would say are a variety of procedures and policies uh, which need to be in place. Still talking about governance. Uh, when I was asked by the select board uh, about what I would bring to the, to the board, I said I'd bring a sense of collegiality and common sense. In my view, to be a member of the Board of Trustees of the Jones Library is not an opportunity to advance your personal agenda. It's an opportunity to work with others on the board and through the director, the staff of the library, to articulate a common vision for the library and for the library's role in town. So I, I want to continue to serve on the board to work on governance, to make the trustees as effective as we can be because effective trustees are necessary an effective library and effective library is necessary to the health and well-being of the town. So the first thing is governance. 
The second thing that I'm uh, interested in and I think is very important is maintaining library services and developing community partnerships. So among the things that I think the library needs to, to work on are restoring Monday morning hours to the library, extending, if it's possible, a weekend hours uh, in the library, uh, restoring and preserving the homebound program, which I think is a, a tremendously important program for the library, in which the library brings services to people who are unable to come to the, uh, to come to the library itself. And among the most important services, of course, is providing books and materials. The library books and materials budget has been cut dramatically in the last several years. Uh, we, need to, um, we need to restore it. By way of partnerships, we need to develop partnerships with the business and artistic community in, in town. Uh, that'll be important, I think, to the long-term well-being of the library. So first is governance. Second is uh, services and partnerships. And lastly, at the center of the work of a trustee of any organization, and it's true for the library as well, is looking out over the horizon and planning for the future. And to do that, we're going to have to think about how we use the historic building that is the Jones Library. That building wasn't built to be a library. It's a great and historic building. But much work needs to be done in that library to make it a facility that will work into the 21st uh, century. The building needs to perhaps be reorganized. We need to think about expanding the building. We need to plan for the branch libraries, which are essential in the town. And we need to plan uh, how we're going to preserve and maintain the endowment of the library. The, li the spend rate on our endowment now is much too high. It needs to be reduced so that the value of the endowment is preserved over time. And we need to plan new ways of thinking about how we're going to fund and develop the library. As you know, the funding for the library comes from the town, comes from its endowment, comes from state aid, and comes from the generous contribution of many citizens in the town. So governance, services and partnerships, and planning for the future, thinking about the future, those are the three things that I think should be at the forefront of the work of the Jones Library trustees. Let's take each one of these and, and just Great. spell it out a little bit more. Great. Uh, when I think about services, I not only think about the usual availability of, of books, storytelling for children, right. uh, and, and uh, the programs for uh, immigration, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, the language issues. Yeah, English is a second language. All those programs are sort of extras that have developed because the community is changing right. and the need is great, greater. Also, we can see by, by usage, usage, usage is up significantly and it's no accident that during a, a great recession, we're finding multiple kinds of uh, uses at the library that for some, didn't exist for some folks before. It's a place to go in the morning when you're out of a job. It's a research mechanism. It's a place to, to use the internet. And so when we talk about services, we have to think of the, uh, the broad use of those services. And that takes staff and that takes money. So the board obviously gets, has a commitment along in, in that area. What kind of money needs to be spent in addition to that? And that's the question I have. You talk about re new resources, which means money. Right. Where will the, the, we, we get it from the state. We get it from tax taxation at the local level. We get it from contributions. Where would we, uh, and then you said partnerships. Right. So let me, let's step back. Um, I, I fully agree with what you've said, but I want to kind of nuance it and turn it just, just a little. Uh, the library is a center for the community not just in hard times or because the population is changing. Libraries used to be thought of in the way museums are thought of. You go and you visit and you're quiet and you're respectful and you take a book out and you're gentle with the book and those are appropriate ways of being in a library. But, but all over the country what we've seen in public libraries is that libraries have become vital community centers. And not just for people who are down in their luck or not just for people who have particular needs. 
So when we think about the library for the future, we have to think about the library as a kind of magnet. As a community center. As a magnet for the community. As a magnet and a partner. The, again, the old idea of the library was it's like visiting a, a relative you didn't much like. You went there rarely. You took something from it. You went home. I think the library has to reach beyond the library into the community as well as being a resource for the community. So I, I don't just think of the library as community center as a kind of refuge, a kind of haven, but I think about the library as community center as a central resource for the town and for its, uh, for its people. It needs to be a place where technology is first rate. People can come and use the technology. It needs to be a place where, as you said, things are done for the community that go beyond the provision of of books and materials. The library has a great opportunity to go right across the street from the Amherst Cinema. The library should be a central player in the development of arts in, in town. The, the library is now participating in the downtown business improvement district. And the library should work with local businesses on event planning, on parking issues. So the whole variety of things, let's call them services, that the library needs to do I want to come back to what I mentioned, the homebound program. So the, the Amherst has a tremendous draw, as it should, for retired people and, and the elderly. It's a wonderful place to live for all of us. But if we think of the library as a kind of museum where people go visit, then they're going to be members of our community, the elderly, people with disabilities, who aren't going to be able to use that, aren't going to be able to use that facility. And the library should be. Uh, thinking about ways of bringing itself to those people, and that's what this homebound program has been. It needs to be strengthened. It needs to be uh, energized. So that's that's the picture that I have of the the library as a, a, a center of the community. The question of resources for the library, it's it's just like the question of resources for the schools and the question of resources for the health department and leisure services in town. We're all in need of resources. The library's finances, as you pointed out, are really quite complex. We have about a $2 million annual budget. About 1.6 comes from the town. The rest of it comes from the endowment, comes from private giving, comes from state, from state aid. The library, I think, has an opportunity to do some serious uh, development and fundraising work. And I think that's going to be an important thing as we look out to the, to the, to the future. It's a great resource. We need to think about ways of making clear to the town and to the citizens how valuable it is. The library director, our wonderful new library director, estimates that on an annual basis, the library provides about $8 million worth of services to the residents of Amherst for a budget investment, as I said, of about $1.6 million. That's quite a return on investment. One of the responsibilities of a trustee is to be a good steward of the resources of the library. Another responsibility is to be an effective advocate for the library, to be a credible advocate for the library. When we go to town meeting, when we ask the town to provide resources, when we go to private uh, donors and we ask those private donors to think about the library as a source of their philanthropy. And I enjoy that kind of work. I think it's important work for trustees to do. And how does it connect with the uh, colleges and the and the elementary and junior and the high schools? Great, great. That's the, the relationships I, you talk about is broader than than just a place to come to to pick up books and other services. I think of the the it's sort of an adjunct to a, an expanding educational system. Right. Want to touch on that? Sure. I, again, I don't mean to, to pick on a word, but I, I wouldn't describe it as an adjunct. I'd re, re, de, de, forgive me. I forgive you. You get my name right, and I'll continue to forgive you. <laughs> um, uh, I don't think about it as an adjunct. I think about it as the kind of uh, hub in the middle of a wheel. Uh, about 700 people a day go to the Jones Library. I'm not talking about the branches, and the branches are essential. About 700 people a day go into that library. Many of them are students. They're students from the local schools, but they're also students from Amherst College and uh, UMass. The new library director has done a wonderful thing, I think, already, which is to reach out to the libraries at the university and at Amherst College and to try to develop some relationships there. Amherst College is a wonderful citizen of the town. And uh, it's getting to be an even better citizen of the town. And one of the things that the college can do and that the 
libraries should think about working with the college to do is to help provide some in-kind services. The library has technology needs. Um, we need to be on the cutting edge of technology. The college has great people who know about technology and can be of great use to the, to, to the library. So I see the library as serving these communities. And I think what we need to do is we need to think about ways in which, in addition to servicing the colleges and the, the schools, we can build better relationships. We can build better relationships with the libraries in town. We can build even better relationships. And we have very good relationships with the schools in town. And as I said, uh, we need to be working, uh, I think, closely with the business community and with the arts community in town. You talked about the future in terms of uh, really reaching a, a point where if we don't do some planning over the next five, ten years, we're going to outgrow what a facility that's in some need of not only re repair but expansion. Yeah. Are you on, uh, presently in your one-year tenure uh, with the uh, the uh, library trustees? Are we talking about some kind of a project along those lines, um, or is that something that's now just being put on the agenda for future consideration? Right. Um, I think it's now just coming onto the agenda, um, in part because the agenda for the last period of time, a large part of the agenda in my uh, service on the board so far, was taken up in recruiting a new director. So we did a rigorous search. We have a terrific new director. We're now working with the director to think about the future. And one of the issues that we all need to think about is the building and the facility. The building, anybody who's been in the, the Jones know, knows this. It's a, it's a wonderful, historic, and beloved building. But it wasn't set up to be a library. So there are vast spaces in the building, the entryway, for example, which are just not usable right now, not used. The way the collection is organized, uh, we need to think about the best way to use the building, so some reorganization. And my, my hunch is that as we look out into the future, we're going to want to expand that building. Now, those are not uncomplicated things to think about, how to reorganize uh, a building while continuing to Tabby. use that building, how to expand the building when resources are are tight. We can go to the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners for a planning grant. Um, when we go through the planning process, the state may provide funds for up to half of, a, of an expansion project or a renovation project in the building. But there'll still be a, a need for substantial resources beyond that. But you've asked, I think, quite rightly, um, where are we? I'd say we're right at the beginning of this. And I think the attention of the trustees needs to be really focused on this. Part of the problem of the trustees of the Jones Library, and it is a problem, is there are relatively few trustees. There are six trustees, and there's a lot of work to do. So to have an effective board, you have to have a focused board. Indeed, one way to understand the problem of the board is it may be that for the board to be a better board, it has to be much more focused and selective in what it pays attention to. There's an awful lot of micromanaging which can occur between a board and the people who run um, an organization. Um, I don't believe that the Board of Trustees of the Jones Library should be micromanaging. We should be setting broad policy. We should be looking at the overall financial health of the organization. We should be getting our governance structure our own governance structure in order. We should be making sure that the services and partnerships are in place, and we should be planning for the, planning for the future. And that's already a very, a very, very ambitious um, agenda for the board. And that's a problem that's universal, isn't it? It sure is. Uh, it, so again, who gets elected and, and uh, how, how, the, how a diverse group of people who are well-intentioned and committed to board uh, find a way to uh, prioritize their uh, agenda for the sure, future. Sure. Again, when I was asked at the time of being appointed to the board, so what my attitude was towards the service on the board, I said to be a good board member is not to be there to pursue a singular agenda. To be a good board member 
you have to think about the well-being of the whole. That means sometimes what you think is the best or the right thing, you may have to say, this is not going to work for this organization or this group of people at this moment. So I say what I bring to the board, I hope, is common sense and collegiality. Common sense, a willingness to think through problems, to evaluate evidence, and to try to pr pursue pragmatic solutions for the library. And collegiality, of an interest in working with others and finding, articulating a shared vision of the library, a vision of the library which puts it, as I believe it should be, at the center of the educational, artistic, and, uh, and downtown life of uh, Amherst, a, a vision which people who love the library can be enthusiastic about. And again, that's what I think one has to do on the board. Are you planning a retreat? Um, the, the board is planning to work uh, with um, uh, an outside consultant to uh, work on our governance procedures. Um, that's what's immediately on our, on our horizon. I think as we look to take on some of these other issues, we'll be thinking about what are the appropriate venues to doing them. As you know, we're governed by an open meeting law. We can't deliberate um, except in public. So whatever it is that we do in terms of planning or in terms of articulating what these long-term visions are going to be, that's going to be done in our, in, our, in our open meetings. Well, I think you've raised a number of great issues for this community to consider when they look at uh, where our leadership should be and what kinds of issues they should be focusing on. How about community input into these ideas? How do you, what does the board do to reach out to the community? Uh, great. Uh, we, we do several things, and I think we should do some things that we're not now doing. So, for example, when um, we put together a search committee for the new uh, library director, we reached beyond the membership of the board. Uh, we had people from the Friends of Jones Library on that committee. We had the head of the local Chamber of Commerce on that committee. And I thought that was an important way of including people uh, from the community. We, we had public meetings in which the candidates could present their views. And again, I thought that was an important way. We have a great resource in the Friends of the Jones Library. Uh, we need to work harder to make sure that the Friends of the Library and the Board of Trustees um, cooperate, um, work together. The, the Friends are a great vehicle for reaching out beyond the uh, the, the board and beyond the staff uh, you know, into, the, you know, into the community. Uh, I had the great good fortune of meeting with the Friends, the board of the Friends, um, yesterday and proposed that the board of the Friends and the board of trustees of the library meet uh, maybe three or four times a year to talk about uh, these issues about involving the community and issues about the future of the, future of the library. One thing I might suggest, and we're doing it right now, as we talk about candidates for trustees, it's conceivable that ACTV ought to be a part of the future in terms of outreach. Uh, you might want to think about the, I'll certainly bring the new administrator in for a conversation. That's a great idea. But I think it would be, there is plenty of room on our, on our agenda for a report from the library in terms of its ongoing activities and sure. the end. Because I think that anything we do to include the community and to give them an opportunity to address issues that are you know, important to all of us, the ACTV can make that kind of a contribution. I, I think it's a great idea. I would love to see ACTV cover the, uh, the board meetings themselves. Um, this, you can't watch the Supreme Court, they don't televise their proceedings, at least we can televise the proceedings of the Jones Library Board of Trustees. I think that would be a great thing to, I think that would be a great thing to do. Short of that, I agree with you. I think having a, a conversation with the new library director is terrific and imagining that over time there'd be some way in which uh, issues that the library are talking about could be um, aired, I think that's just great. You know, the, uh, the, even the concept of every time there's a new program developed at the library, it ought to be covered not only in terms of newspaper, but uh, interviews and 
I look forward to opening up that process because I think the library is very close to many of us and I think this is one town where we wouldn't have the kind of dispute that we had in a na that we have in a neighboring town. Well, again, I'm, I'm glad I agree with what you said. I think the library is um, um, it's a wonderful facility in a, in, a, in a great town. I think there are a lot of people that love the library, and I'd be thrilled if the uh, ACTV would be a vehicle for helping get the word out about the library and what's going on in the library. That's we have PSAs library. available at all times, and what I, the, the way to handle this is to simply invite your new director in and introduce her to the system. We'll do an, we'll, we'll take her around and show her what's available and how she could make use of the system. That's great. Yeah. Professor Sarrett. Yes, sir. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Good luck. Thank you very much. We've been talking to Austin Sarrett, who is a candidate for Board of Trustees, now completing his first year and uh, is in a position to serve another three years if he gets elected. So you'll have an opportunity to uh, see this interview if you don't catch it when it's on air. It's online 24-7. So look for it under uh, actvamers.com or amherstmedia.org. And you can meet uh, Mr. Sarrett and you can meet the other candidates. So uh, on behalf of uh, the wonderful vol student volunteers and our staff and myself, see you next week. Good night. Great.